So here we have a rotating fan that is completing 1200 revolutions every minute and the tip of the blade has a radius of 0.15 meters. And it's important to understand that the tip of the fan is moving around in a circle, of course. And so in order to find the distance that the tip of the fan moves in one revolution, we simply need to find the distance around the circle. Now, of course, the distance around a circle is also known as the circle's circumference. So really, part A is just asking us for the circumference of this circular path. We know that circumference is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the radius. So in this case, we would have 2 pi multiplied by the given radius of 0.15 meters. So we simply have to plug this into our calculators and we will get the correct answer to part A. So 2 pi multiplied by 0.15, <clears throat> excuse me, will give us a circumference of about 0.94 meters. So this would be the correct answer to part A. In part B, we are asked for the tip of the fan's speed. And we can symbolize that speed with a letter V. And it turns out that we can find the speed using this information right here. We can rewrite that as 1200 revolutions over one minute. And we will perform a basically unit conversion here. We just determined in part A that one revolution around the circle is equivalent to a distance of 0.94 meters. You'll notice that when we set up this unit conversion, we have arranged the revolutions so that they would cancel out and leave us with meters, which is the unit that we desire for speed. But right now we have it in meters per minute. We probably need this in meters per second. So we do another unit conversion and we know that one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. And again, the way we've arranged it is in a manner so that the minutes would cancel out. If you look carefully, you are now left with a unit of meters per second, and that's the typical unit of speed that we would like. So now you pick up your calculator and you punch this in. You're basically multiplying 1200 by the 0.94 and then dividing by 60, and you end up with about 18.8 meters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part B. In part C, we are asked for the magnitude of the acceleration. Now, this is an example of what's called uniform circular motion, which basically means an object is moving in a circle at a nice steady speed. And the acceleration of an object in such motion is equal to the speed squared divided by the radius. Nice and straightforward. So we take the speed that we just determined in part B, and we square it, and then we divide by the radius and again, that radius was 0.15 meters. So we can punch this into our calculators. We're going to get about 2,369, and then we're gonna end up with meters per second squared. So this would be the correct answer for the acceleration in part C. And finally, we need the period of the motion. Now we may have learned from uniform, uh, circular motion that the period is symbolized by capital T. And it's basically the distance divided by the speed. Now again, the distance was the circumference. It was 2 pi r divided by the speed. And we've actually figured out these values already. Remember in part A, we figured out the circumference, and that was the 0.94 meters. And then we divide this by the speed that we obtained in part B which was the 18.8 meters per second. So basically we divide these values and when we do so, we should get a period of 0.05 seconds. So this would be the correct answer to part D.